That's good. Okay, this week's video, we're talking about you love working out, you love fitness, you invest in your self-care, but unfortunately, your partner, your spouse, or your significant other either doesn't or doesn't support you in that. They may even say things like, why do you go to the gym so much? Or they may see it as a waste of time or even a waste of money. So because of that, you can feel a mixture of feelings, things like guilt, shame, um, time spent like you're not, you shouldn't be investing in yourself. A slew of other things could come from this, maybe conflict between you and them. Um, Gail, have you ever experienced uh, anything similar to this of maybe some conflict where differing uh, values or unsupport, something like that? Yeah, definitely. D not, the, not the supporting aspect, but just living two different lifestyles. Um, in the beginning of my relationship, um, my, uh, my partner would is very much into the nightlife scene where bartender working until late and then of course you know the habits where you work until late and then you go to bed late and then wake up a little bit later during the day so like the cycle was off from when I started getting back into uh, working out getting up early trying to you know dial in my nutrition um, so that was always hard because I used to have my foot in that lifestyle as well so it was kind of hard to Try, uh, get into this new routine of going to bed early, waking up early, getting in my, my fitness routine, meal prepping or just eating uh, mindfully and you know even cutting out a little bit of the, the drinking at that point in time um, where I would find myself getting pulled back into that lifestyle because you know if he's doing it then I want to do it too because I enjoyed myself during that time so it wasn't um, you know he always supported me in this lifestyle it was maybe a little bit of lack of discipline from myself and the um, uh, maybe like the congruency between him and I uh, living a similar lifestyle so that that's where I, I've noticed that before I experienced that before yeah so to kind of kick off what Abby said I, I... In one of my previous relationships, I had a, a partner who didn't jive with the, with the rest of my circle. We talked a lot in these videos about, you know, who you surround yourself with, what does your circle look like, is it supportive? And I had a, a, a partner who maybe didn't get along with, didn't get along with probably like the, the four or five most important people in my circle. So I felt like I was constantly dancing this line of like, okay, I'm going to be over here on one day, I'm going to be over here on the next with these people here. And it's kind of, I, I felt like I was never really like truly like happy where, where I was and I would affect like things inside of the inside of the gym, like my performance, my sleep, how I was eating, stress, all those things. Um, and it led to like a lot of fights, a lot of like butting heads, things maybe not being as smooth as they needed to be and maybe spending and investing a lot of time into things that didn't pay off in the in the long run. Definitely learned a, a lot, but uh, didn't have like that that smooth, congruent circle where it was like, you know, everybody jive really well we could like all be in the same space it just really didn't like mesh very well um so yeah spent like a lot longer of a time in that relationship than maybe i should have and you know just for, for whatever reason but um not like directly fitness related but kind of like the the supporting of fitness where like you know my again, like my sleep was affected my stress was affected like how i ate was affected and like all those things play a huge factor and a role in like how in, in in the goals you want to achieve and, and how you want to perform in the in the gym so um that's kind of like my fitness, like the, the support circle fitness story as far as that goes, but um, Peter? So unfortunately the other, pretty recently, we had a real life instance of somebody coming into the gym and expressing, or maybe not expressing, but being in this situation of having a partner who's not supportive of their goals for fitness or nutrition or anything that's self-development for them. So this one lady comes into the gym very recently and she has the sit down conversation with Abby and I, and she's so clearly ready to get started on improving herself that she's so excited for this and she just needs a little bit more time for herself so she can get to be in the place of fitness where she wants to be, where she can be a little bit happier, have more self-care uh, self time. And to square things away, we had to meet with her partner the next day. And when he came in, he had a very different sense of what was going on. He was so like dead, dead set in what he thought was going to be the right way. He didn't even take his AirPods out when I was talking to him. Just that's kind of showing a little bit that he did, would, 
there was no room for change in any of the conversation we were going to have. And basically, what he did was shrug away all of what she wanted, which was to get started in this self-development journey, and she was so excited for it, whereas he just wanted to get her accelerated into the program as fast as possible, bypassing anything safety related, anything, you know, connection related, any of the building steps that we want you guys to have before entering a group class. And basically <clears throat> was sent her away and she's not end up she didn't end up with us due to him wanting to just get through the progress and make things easier from a financial standpoint as well, while disregarding what she really wanted. Sean, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, um, you know, I kind of lived that too when I, uh, one of my first relationships, young and in love, and I had this, um, this significant other who fitness at the time had greatly changed my life, how I felt about myself confidence-wise. I was starting to feel really, really good. And um, I was also in the military at the time. And so my time, I'd be very intelligent with my time, and the times that I did have time to exercise, um, I always got chastised for that in terms of why are you always working out or why do you need to work out and it kind of put this um, this rift between us and I can look back now you know years removed and realize my faults and flaws and maybe not having the correct dialogue about maybe what could have helped nurture you know a better coming together of that but it always had this gap between us of understanding of this thing that was important to me and how it made me feel about myself and my overall life and because she necessarily didn't work out and could maintain a, a figure with without exercising, she didn't see the value in it. Um, so we, we had this divide that eventually just kept growing and growing and eventually had us split. So, you know, with that said and, and all these stories, what do you guys think are some helpful solutions and tips and takeaways that people could take away in real time um, that could be of value to them? And Nolan, I'll kick it to you first. Uh, going through a, a self audit, I recommend like Grab a, a pen and paper and go through these three things. First, start out with, I talked about this earlier, like like your 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 circle. Like who are probably like the three to five most important people that are in your circle? And look at them, uh, not like a place of like judgment or anything like that, but like are they in support of, of what you're trying to do, whether it be fitness related, career related, like really, I mean, anything related. Like are they there for you? They support you like in the ways that you need them. Uh, second would be, uh, auditing your, your lifestyle. We're never stagnant. We're either moving closer to our goal or further away from our goal. And every decision you make is gonna move you closer to that goal or further away. So, you know, writing out, okay, like what are the things that I enjoy doing? What are the things that I do in my free time? Uh, when I'm trying to be productive, things like that. And are they moving me closer to my goal or further away from my goal? And a, a way to really narrow the scope in terms of like lifestyle, the circle, your goals is looking at your values. You can you can lean a lot on your values when it comes to making tough decisions, important like life changing decisions. You know, when you have those concrete values and you know, okay, I I, I want to live with integrity, with trust. Uh, like you know, just a couple examples there. But when you have those to lean on, it can make times where you need to make a tough call like a lot easier when you, when you can when you can lean on those. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So going off what he said about having you know that core group of people that when you go into thinking about like being peer pressured by those people say they have a different sort of mindset than you do. One example could be that if you're going out to spend time with them, to enjoy their, their company, the experience, so you guys go to a bar and while they may be drinking a couple of drinks, you want to stop yourself at maybe one or two or maybe even none, maybe you don't drink. The thing is you got to own your truth. You know, you're putting in all this time to better yourself, and to be fit and all of these things. And if you guys wanna cap yourself and still enjoy the experience with everybody else, then you need to make it known that this is why I'm doing it and you hold fast to it versus getting like peer pressured and almost berated by them for thinking that either you're doing it because you don't wanna be with them or maybe, you, maybe they think that you stopping there, this could apply to eating, eating food as well. Like, going out to eat. You could think that you're like, they might feel like you're better than them, but that's not what it is. It's about your doing what's right for whatever your morals are, your goals, and why you're putting in all the time to being fit, keeping your nutrition, your mindset, all of those things. So just holding on to what it is that you guys are really striving for. 
knowing that what you're doing is making a difference for yourself. Yeah, that, one, that one's tough. And, and I think to spin off of Nolan's and then Peter's and then into this one is more effective communication, whether that's your spouse or your friends, whoever's in your circle or your tribe, coming together, and it's okay that we can be different, um, coming together of what and why these things truly matter to you, how they impact, influence, and affect your everyday life. And if it's your spouse too, how it affects the relationship or their life. Maybe the fitness, the exercising, the eating well allows you to show up as the best version of yourself, a more focused, present partner, parent, whatever that may be. Or it's a stress reliever, which I know that is for a lot of our people that come in here, is it's that hour for them where, you know, with whatever they endure outside of these walls, they can come in here, blow off some steam, know that they're bettering themselves and feeling good. So getting together with that person and saying, can I just grab your ears for a few minutes? And I'm just looking to be heard and understood. And it's really important how we think about approaching that conversation of X, Y, Z, gym, eating well, whatever it is, is extremely important to me. And I don't, it, I don't want that to become a conflict for us. The support that I'm looking for in you, in this endeavor for me, looks like X. And that would mean whatever that means to you. So I think effective communication and, and dialogue is critical, whether that's your friends or your, your partner. Yeah, so. definitely. And, and standing your ground and really leaning into your truth, I think that's going to be a big part is that, um, you know, younger and in those younger times we, we get, all right, all right, I'll just, I'll do it or, you know, get giving into a little bit more of that, um, that pressure. But, you know, now as I can see so many clients of mine, and I'm sure you guys can relate, is that this is their lifeline. You know, these are things where they are, it's a cry for help and it's like, this is what they have to help with their, their mental health, with their physical health, with all the things that they're, that are happening outside of the, these walls. And if it's not this, it could be a, uh, you know, a spiral into something so much worse. So standing the ground and being like, this is, this is something Stand where, <laughs> this, yeah, hello, standing the ground. Um, this is what I need. This is what I want. And like Sean said, communication and it's okay. I, and I, I can relate and I'm sure you guys can of just being in that situation of what, you know, going out with friends or being somewhere and, um, whether it's what you order and being like, oh, that's right, you're the, the health, healthy person. And just being like, yep, that's what I am. That's what I am. This is what I'm going to enjoy. Yeah, and uh, what's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> right. Um, so that's definitely it. Leaning into your truth, taking a self audit of yourself, communicating, and definitely standing your ground. The stand your ground is, applies to everybody and even more so to those who have like the person in their life of years who is unwilling to change. And we know a lot of people and that have met them, you take that deep breath. <laughs> that like, okay, they're not willing to meet me and participate in their own rescue. I have to do this for me because it's my lifeline. So, that's how you get support. <laughs>